Welcome back, guys, to Talking Dog Shit. Episode number seven. Today we're going to talk about genetics and how things can be passed on into your dog by all their ancestries and their mamas and their papas and all that good stuff and some of the good stuff to get passed and some of the bad stuff to get passed. So Alyssa's going to open up and tell us a little bit about some of the good things that can be passed on through genetics in your dog. Right, Alyssa? Yes. All right, tell us all about it. So good things that can be passed along in genetics are... Um, a huge example is going to be working breeds. Things that you're breeding into dogs to have them produce. That would be herding breeds, cattle dogs. You want to breed for certain characteristics like determined biting, confidence. All of those things are going to be great things that they are going to have that natural ability to do. That's why we get a lot of people who come in are like, my corgi is chasing my kids and biting their ankles, or my Aussie is chasing the other dogs or our birds or our cats. <laughs> you over there. Um, and that's because they were originally designed to do that. They were designed to herd or, you know, Malinois and German Shepherds, they were originally bred to be guard dogs and that's why they thrive in things like personal protection or police work or military work. So those things are what people focus on when they're trying to produce a working dog. They're looking for the, not only in the DNA to have those characteristics, but that the parents are displaying those behaviors as well too in a successful, trainable, malleable manner. Yeah, so like if you go on pretty much the AKC site or like the dog breed sites, you'll, you'll put in certain breeds, i.e. some of the ones she said. For those who don't know what AKC means. American Kennel Club. Right, it's akc.com, I think. It's uh, all the registered breeds that are purebreds. Yes, correct. Uh, but if you go in there, it'll say like you know the temperament of the dog, and, and then it'll go into you know what the dog genetically was bred for, and some of the things that she rattled off are correct. Like cattle dog was bred to get kicked in the face and come back and bite the cattle again. Like that's what it's bred for. And people are like, oh, my cattle dog's such a tough dog. Well, yes, it was bred for that. Um, the Aussies of the world to herd animals. So yes, when your kids run around and they're nipping at their heels, they're doing what they were bred for. You don't want a dog nipping at your kid's heels. Don't get a damn Aussie, people, okay? <laughs> Simple as that, right? Uh, uh, again, I have a pointer. We all know this already, right? Yes, bourbon, right? He likes birds. Gee, I wonder why. He's a bird dog, right? I can't get him to stop going after birds. Gee, I wonder why, guys, <laughs> all right? Maybe I should go get him trained. No, he's a bird dog. He's supposed to do those things. So be wary when you're getting a new dog, research the breed, and figure out what they were genetically bred for, and then say, hmm, do I want this in my life? Can I have this in my life? Is it gonna be appropriate for my lifestyle? Before you just go get a dog because it's the right color, right. right? So Jason, how about some of the physical characteristics of animals that can be passed on? Well, personally, I took offense over that live comment because I'll definitely go get a dog based off his color. <laughs> Don't do what Jason does. <laughs> hey, that's a damn good looking dog right there. I'm gonna get me one of those. Um, no, no, but honestly, uh, dogs can come in different varieties, right? Just like people. Me and even family members, right? Like, you might have the same parents. Doesn't mean that you guys come out identical twins, right? Some dogs are heavier. Some dogs take after their mother. Some dogs take after their father or sire or dam you know, with breeding terms <laughs> so but your dogs can take after the grandfather you know people will come in ah oh, my dog my dog's dad was 175 pounds like and they expect their dog to be 175 pounds of pure muscle next thing you know the dog is 90 pounds and they're overfeeding it because they're trying to get to the 175 and and no don't don't fall into the trap every dog will come out different even if you see both parents your dog can still come out different right i have a dog that i bred and i was hoping it was based on color actually um it wasn't just based on color but i like the temperament of both the parents 
bred them. I was really hoping for a mostly white dog. Why? Because the dad was all white and my dog was black. Didn't get one white or black dog. They all came out brindle, right? <laughs> like, it happens. It happens. Like, you're going to get dogs that are bigger. You're going to get dogs that are smaller. You're going to get dogs that are a little bit more intelligent. You're going to get dogs that have higher drives. You're going to get dogs that are lazier. You're going to get a whole... It can run the gambit, right? So genetics, it plays a part when it comes to how they look. Yes, clearly I look a little bit more like my mother and a little bit like my father, right? But do I look exactly like them? No, I don't. I don't look exactly like my mom. I don't look exactly like my dad. I took a mix between a mixture of everybody in my family, right? So you can get brown, white, no purple dogs, but <laughs> I, I've, there, there, was, there was uh, some, <laughs> some weird offshoot of purple Frenchie that came through here. What? Yes, I swear to you, there was... I, I want to say they called it a velour Frenchie. I know what you're talking about. It I was know like a about. hazy purple color. I swear to you. I swear to you. <laughs> I automatically want this purple dog. Like, see, I get, I get why you guys buy dogs off of looks, but you shouldn't buy, or even if you're not buying, you shouldn't expect a dog to look exactly a certain way. And don't go, like he said earlier, don't go out and get a dog just because it looks good because <laughs> you want you want to finish your twizzler there first <laughs> i will so now we've got genetics can pass on working abilities and and uh, athleticism and temperament and things like that and then we have physical traits could be color it could be coat type it could be size of the dog um offshoot of that from our last video or there one video back for the nutrition stuff i really hate when people do this one point that jason brought up you know just because your dog's dad was 175 pounds you feeding it more is not going to make it 175 pounds all right oh, it pure muscle. <laughs> does not have the structure for that genetically there so please don't do that um, but again it goes back to structure of the dog those things that can be passed on genetically, you can't necessarily change that or influence that in the dog. There's just the dog that you have. Um, how many doodle mixes we get coming in here now? And brother, sister, litter mates have, you know, curly coat, wire coat, straight coat, and they're all the same mom and dad, right? You can't pick and choose which traits you're gonna pull out of there. So those are things that come along with it. Along with that is gonna be some of the bad side of genetics here and some of the medical things here. And Ms. Rebecca is gonna to touch on some of the things that can be passed along from the medical standpoint. Yeah, this is the starting to get to the, to the not so fun part of genetics too. But again, the best way we can relate this to is, you know, humans too. Like you have a, every single time you go into the doctor, they ask you your family history and stuff too because it can pertain to you as well. Same exact thing happens with dogs as well. So for instance, growing up, um, my parents bred golden retrievers. Golden retrievers are notorious for having hip issues too. I mean, that goes with a lot of breeds too. And it can even go into depth as to even, you know, over age, it can develop like cataracts, issues, cancer, all, all kinds of stuff like that. Especially if there's poor breeding involved, it can also lead to deformities. It can, well, it's just bow-leggedness. It could lead to neurological issues as well, too. So it's just, oh man, I'm like, I'm trying not to go down a rabbit hole right now and get everyone super depressed, so. But the thing is, nowadays, there's actually tests that we actually did not have available to us, like what, like even like 10, 15 years ago, too, where you can just send in a saliva swab for your dog and that can actually test them in their genetics if they're more prone to have these certain diseases or pass anything like that. Exactly, that too, so the way they don't pass them on or like if they might be prone to getting it to kind of like get yourself ready for preparation in that as well too. And there's, yeah, it goes a lot into that as well. Yeah, so um, 
coming from the working dog world in, in the early portion of my career, that's a lot of things that we test for early on when we are breeding and or purchasing a dog um, is things like hip dysplasia or bad spines, bad elbows, bad eyes. There's things that we do early on because there's so much training time invested in these dogs. And I've personally have seen, I mean, dogs that have been working the streets as a patrol dog for years. And then all of a sudden, year three or four, you know, at the peak of this dog's career, full-blown hip dysplasia. We have to immediately retire this dog. This is a dog who's been working for three or four years, who has countless hours of training into it. And now we gotta say, sorry, your career is done. Most of the time the dogs get euthanized um, because they're at such a level of training that they can't go live a normal life, just go sit in a pet home. So a lot of times they get euthanized. So in that aspect of it, like, sadly, as much as people disagree with the Greyhound world, they're probably one of the highest and strictest on genetics yeah. because they test for everything. And their level of breeding is so fine tuned because they're trying to get rid of all those things for the same reason. Like they're looking for the cream of the crop, the perfect dog specimen, and they won't breed if it doesn't have this or doesn't have a certain level of that there. Um, so again, to touch on what Rebecca was saying is some of the bad side of genetics that can be passed on it, or things like that. So another thing to look for when you're researching your breed is not just the energy level, not just what it's genetically bred for to do from a working side, but some of the things they're, they're prone to is like you know, health wise, you know, are they bad skin or you know, it doesn't have to always be full blown hip dysplasia or things like that. There's other things that dogs are actually notoriously uh, genetically prone to. Um, I'm going to wrap up on probably the most sensitive side of it because it's not like something you can always see, all right? So for instance, you know, oh, I didn't get the curly hair dog that I wanted or the purple dog, right? That's an obvious, right? Or this dog keeps chasing my kid. It's, it's got too much prey drive. That's an obvious. Or my dog's limping. I've got bad hips. That's an obvious, right? Some of the genetics that we don't always see, especially early on is some of the actual like internals as far as like anxiety or fears or things like that. Um, I have a client and if she's watching this video, she'll know exactly who she is because she came in a few years ago and it's one of my most memorable clients here. And she sat down in our evaluation room and literally told me to my face, she said, look, I fed this dog the best food. I gave this dog the best life. This dog has never had a finger laid on it in its life. And it was born fearful. And it was true, she knew it. She was like, I researched everything under the sun. She was like, there's nothing I did wrong. It's just the way that my dog is, can you fix it? And the sad part is, not really, not all the time. We can do some things, but if your dog has genetic issues where it has got genetic anxiety, genetic fearfulness, genetic aggression, right? There's no 100% fix of that. There's management of those things. And those are other things you wanna look for because nowadays there's so many breeders for Everybody's a breeder, right? You got two dogs, you got a male, a female, I'm a breeder now. And, oh, I'm gonna breed this one because it has a lot of muscle. I'm gonna breed this one because it has this color, it's got this size head. And no one goes and tests for these things. And sadly, the gene pool gets diluted and the biggest sacrifice are those things that we're listing off is those issues we're seeing and these dogs coming in with behavior issues. So you wanna make sure you're researching your breeders. If you're gonna be buying a dog from a breeder, hey, do you test for this? I noticed that this was in this type of dog's history here. And if they have no clue what it is, you probably wanna stay away real quick, away. okay? Anyway. So we covered a lot today. We went through some of the genetic aspects of the working side, the plus side here. We went through some of the physical traits as well. We went through some of the medical traits. We talked about some of the internal workings of the dog and the anxieties and things like that. So again, when you're researching a breeder or even going to, uh, you know, if you're going to a shelter, spend some time with the dog, but really do your research here. Uh, you know, make sure you're really seeing what you're getting yourself into because when you get that dog, you're committing to a lifetime with that dog there, right? So 
it, don't just go past your problems on to someone else here. Like really do your research and really make sure you get the dog that you want going forward here. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll probably do a second round of this here because there is a lot more information to cover here. So if you have any comments, questions, etc., like always put it down below. If you have a guess on how many Twizzlers that Jason ate during this video, please put it in the video below. And if you have the right number, I will send you one of our hats. I promise you there. <laughs> right? So there you go. And like always, we will see you guys in the next video of Talking Dog Shit. See ya.